Okay, um, I'm going to start off with this, since it's at the top of my list. <laughs> um, do you know what you look like? Do you know what you look like? What, what kind of a question is that? What do you mean, do I know what I look like? Of course I know. You know, all I got to do is look in the mirror. There I am. Um, so I'll share from my perspective. I don't know what I look like. And here's why. You know, it, it, it turns out that what we perceive, what we perceive isn't really um, what is what is real in the sense of, I mean, I, I may be just this like glowing energy and for some reason because I'm 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 experiencing what I call my reality through uh, certain lenses that uh, fine tune me into this experience into this reality. Um, so I'm I'm interpreting my my physical existence the way I look. Um, the way I change as I go through life, uh, I'm interpreting all of that through the uh, channel that I'm I'm tuned into. But that doesn't mean what I think I look like is really what I look like. I mean, for example, um, once upon a time, many many years ago, a couple of decades now. Uh, I was running through some woods. I had a, adopted a, uh, an exercise program where I was going out for runs. And uh, I would run through these woods. And I'll never forget it. It's like all of a sudden, at one moment during this run, on this day, or evening actually, which is interesting in, in in itself. I was running through these woods in the dark. What the heck, you know? But for some reason, I was able to do that, and I uh, I never actually had a mishap where I I <laughs> crashed into something. You know? I mean, what was that about? Anyway, um, I heard this electronic beep. That's the best way I can describe it. High pitched electronic beep in my head. You know. And I'm running along, and as it happens, I'm like, where the heck did that come from? You know, my uh, if I was wearing a watch at the time, it didn't make sense like that. And um, it came from inside my head. I mean, you know, and it, it, it caught my attention. I continued my run. I didn't stop or anything, but I was like, uh, what the heck was that? And it only happened once. But it was uh, very pronounced and very solid. It wasn't a matter of did I hear something? No, no, I did. I, I definitely did. I heard it. I experienced it, and it was in my head. Okay, why? What the heck is that? So, getting back to the idea, do we know? Um, how did I put that? Do we know what we actually look like? No. No, I I could I could literally be some kind of um, glowing energy field in in a laboratory someplace, and somehow one of the um, machines making a beep um, bled through into my experience as I was doing the run. You know, I mean, that's just an idea of the multitude of uh, conditions or realities or whatever that could actually be more real than what uh, I perceive my reality to be. Now, obviously, this post isn't going to be for everyone. It's... Uh, it's uh, it's a bit out there, and that's, that's why I was wondering, where, where should I put this? But ultimately, these are the kinds of thoughts that, uh, to varying degrees, uh, I've had my entire life and have uh, shaped and formed my experience. So 
so yeah, uh, I'll, I'll put this uh, in my autobiography channel. If you have any comments, <clears throat> um, if you like this kind of content as well, because my autobiography channel won't be just this kind of content. I'll also have, you know, just travel experiences and this happened and that happened in a less uh, esoteric kind of way. But if you actually do find interest in this kind of content, let, let me know so I'm uh, more apt to um, share some of these uh, events. Now, this, this next one, um, changing the subject now. So I was about <clears throat> maybe, maybe 14 years old maybe no probably more like 15 or 16 i'm thinking anyway i was um reading some material that related to creating your own reality okay um these were well i forget the exact title of this book because over the years i read several um by this person it was uh uh, by the author Jane Roberts, um, uh, relating to Seth Speaks, um, the Seth material, all that stuff. But anyway, um, I got it into my head, the idea of creating your own reality, you know. And um, the information resonated with me. Um, it made sense to me, you know. And I remember... Mm, I uh, I caught a cold, and this was my first time in consciously testing the information that was being shared uh, through whatever book I was reading at the time. And so, even though I had the cold, um, it seemed um, uh, right and proper for me to tell myself that I didn't. So what I did was uh, I, I told myself, you know, right there, I mean, I'm, I'm in like the first day of my cold, but the whole thing, the, the congestion, the sore throat, I mean, everything. And I already knew my colds, for whatever reason, back then, um, lasted like a, a, around two weeks, you know. Uh, but there, there it was right on day one. Uh, I, I told myself, I, I, I don't have a cold. I, I forget how I said it. Um, probably just something like that, because I doubt if I was aware of um, keeping it in the positive. Uh, in other words, as opposed to saying, uh, I am strong and healthy. Although uh, I do believe I was saying that too. But at the same time, uh, I was saying things like, uh, I don't have a cold, you know. And of course, as soon as I would say that, um, the next thought in my head was, yes, I do. This is crazy. How can I even tell myself that? You know, because it didn't make solid sense in my head to deny what I was in the midst of. You know, I, I felt awful. And that was it. But this information through, um, I forget the Seth material, or Seth Speaks or something. The first book I ever read by Jane Roberts was, um, uh, I think it was the Seth material. Actually, there was another one that I found just before that one that talked about uh, how to develop your uh, ESP abilities and things like that, which is a story in itself. I, I won't go there right now. But, so, I'm telling myself that I I didn't have a cold. And at the same time, boom, the next sentence in my mind is, yes, I do. And, and this is just, you know, ridiculous. But I didn't give up. I just kept, I kept saying that over and over in my mind. Because in a way, it also made sense to me to, given this opportunity, test the um, information, you know. Is this real? Is it isn't real? Uh, is it going to work? It's not going to work. And of course, pretty much I was thinking it's not going to work because 
you know, what, what do you mean I don't have a cold? You know, right? But interestingly enough, something happened. And that was the first time in my um, history that, that I'm aware of um, that I had a cold that only lasted three days. And also, interestingly enough, after that, uh, I never actually ever again had a cold that lasted two weeks. Something had somehow shifted and clicked. And somehow, um, the idea that a cold had to last two weeks was gone. And so after that, yeah, just, just about three days. Um, but not every time. I mean, sometimes, boom, it just wouldn't even really take hold. You know, the idea of I didn't have to, you know, would, would be there and then it wouldn't even happen, you know. Whereas in the past, at the first sense of having a cold, you know, pretty much it was like downhill from there into the whole cold reality, if you will. But uh, after that, it, it all changed. There's a movie I saw years ago. Kurt Russell was in it. And uh, I, I think it was called Soldier. And uh, I, I won't go into what the movie was about, really, except to say um, this, this guy, he was part of a um, military experience. Well, I, I got to tell you a little bit, I guess. Um, from the time he was little, he, um, he was uh, being shaped as a, as a soldier. And the training was ferocious. Basically, to fail the training um, meant death from the time he was little. Um, you know, failing a lesson, uh, doing a, a, a run for however many miles and not being able to keep up. I mean, it wasn't a, like, like a D minus, except in the, in the sense that, um, your failure would be rewarded with a bullet, that kind of thing. So needless to say, the ones that survived that level of training and actually became the, um, soldiers um they were they were serious uh, a force to be reckoned with i mean they followed orders they, they did exactly as they were told because they were conditioned from the time they were just little and the ones that didn't make it they just weren't there and so i forget where in the movie but at one point later in the movie you know He's, 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 you know, had years now of just being this soldier. And, you know, somebody asks him at one point in the movie, what motivates you? You know, it's like he's on a different planet now. They don't really know his history, you know, things like that. And, and, um, He's asked, what motivates you? And the, like, the, 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 the person, you know, cares. You know, she's, she's gotten to, like, interact with him and um, appreciate him and, and like him. You know, and it's like, what motivates you? And remember, we're talking about this, excuse my français, but uh, for lack of a better way of expressing it, this badass um soldier that's like you know top of the top I mean just you know somebody you want on your side and uh, if he's not going to be on your side then you should probably just leave the planet or something if you can and his answer his answer I appreciated and it took me by surprise but uh, he said he thought about it for a second then he looked at her and he said, fear. And then, of course, remembering the, the history I told you about a moment ago. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. From the time he was little, just a kid, 
in the training, you know, yeah, fear. Because to fail was to die, literally. There, it was, that's it. He, he, he saw what happens to the other children when they fail the lesson and they died. So, yeah. But interestingly enough, you know, in that moment, the first time I saw the movie, I've seen it a couple of times. Yeah, if you have a chance to check it out and it sounds like the kind of thing that you'd be interested in, I recommend it. Kurt Russell, so, you know, it's an old movie. And I believe it's called Soldier. And, um, yeah, Fear. And when I heard that, it was like, whoa. Because in my own way, I could relate to that, you know. I don't know if you know, but, um, yeah, I could relate to that. Okay, now we'll move on to another one. Once again, about creating your own reality. This is the next one on my list here. Um, once upon a time, once again, decades ago, I um, actually worked as a political activist. And I, I was part of this organization and I got paid you know, hence the term worked as a political a activist. But I find it pretty cool and pretty exciting. And I felt like, like I was doing something, you know. And this was something that I did, um, which is another story. But um, after I got clean and I started my life over, that kind of thing. And uh, I found this job where I felt like uh, it could be like part of my new beginning, my new life. And so, you know, I, I climbed inside of it and did the best I could with it. But along the way, um, I, I started waking up and remembering um, some of the lessons that I had learned from a long, long time ago. And one of those was creating my own reality and being careful of the things I devote my attention to, lest I inadvertently uh, work on manifesting things in my experience that uh, I really don't want. And so once that memory we reawakened in my mind, it started messing with me. Because every time I would be actively, you know, because it, it, it was like, uh, once that memory we reawoke, it was like a seed that was growing and growing. And uh, more and more, as I devoted my energy and attention to doing the uh, work of, uh, as a political activist. Uh, at the same time, more and more, I kept feeling like I was literally working to reinforce the very things I didn't want. And so eventually I needed to quit. And that's what I did. But I remember I went with uh, the director once, just uh, him and I, to um, uh, some some kind of event. It was an event related to um, discussion and uh, helping to, it, it was like a training event for political activists, you know. And um, in its way, it was very exciting. And if that part of me hadn't started waking up in that moment, you know, a little before this trip, uh, I would have enjoyed it a whole lot more. But already I was feeling the conflict, you know, so as I sat there meeting um, other people, um, some of them, you know, pretty high up in the, um, um, what do you call it, echelon or whatever of uh, political activism, they kind of ruined it for me, <laughs> you know, because all the while I was thinking, I need to get out of this, you know, so could have been a very cool experience for me but and and it was it, it, I have some good memories around it in in the sense of getting to do it but at the same time 
was right in the midst of uh, waking up again into the idea of I don't want to uh, be reinforcing the very things that uh, I feel like I don't want. Yeah, so. Okay, well, I hope you found interest in, in, in some of this stuff, maybe even all of this stuff. Um, that's all I've got right now. And yeah, leave, leave a comment. Let, let me know where you're watching this from. You know, me, I'm in Northern California right now. And uh, what else did I want to say? Yeah, let, let, let me know if you feel it would have been a better post if I had broken it up, you know, edited one segment here, one segment there, like that. Or if you like it like this. Um, and if I did end up editing it, uh, I'll leave this part in and let me know if you would have wanted it just um, as a whole. Uh, I guess that's all for now. I hope the voices come through clearly from my earbud. And uh, I hope when I view this, I, I feel it's good enough to post. Otherwise, you'll never see it. Mm, okay, maybe I'll do another post today. That's it. Bye for now. Uh, be good to yourself. You deserve it.